Hello everyone, it's Shane Kanto, your Wasteland reviewer, and here's my weekend review for the weekend ending, what the hell's the date? It's going to be the week ending on February 9th, this Sunday, and I'm here to talk about, <clears throat> I had a couple of sh films that I was able to stream, a couple on AMC On Demand, and one through Netflix DVD, and one on Amazon, and then a couple of different shows that I've been keeping up with, and then some that I got to watch a whole season of, especially the newest season of The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. So I'm going to start talking about The Weeknd, and I got to stream this film on AMC On Demand, and it's one of those kinds of things where it's like it really captures those awkward human moments, and it does it in a really realistic way. The biggest issue I had with this film is the lead is, is pretty unlikable a lot of the time, and it's hard to really connect with her and sympathize with her. But in general, it's very interesting, it's emotional, dealing with this weird situation of this woman and her ex and his girlfriend staying at our main character's mother's um, bed and breakfast, and this other man being there, and weird relationship building and rekindling happen over the course of a weekend. And it's an interesting film enough and entertaining enough and hits emotionally enough for you to be engaged through it. It's definitely not like a great film, but it was something that I'd recommend if this kind of strange romantic kind of film is what you're looking for. Then I also on AMC On Demand I watched Strange But True, and this film sure is strange. It has like crazy lifetime movie twists and all these weird kinds of things. It has a really strong cast, like Amy Ryan and Greg Kinnear and Brian Cox, and it's interesting and twisty in its story enough to keep you engaged as a thriller, but like, it's not the most well put together film and it feels a little on the nose with how its storytelling is going. It's like, here's a twist, but like honestly, it kept me on my toes, it was pretty unpredictable and it was entertaining enough as a thriller. Then I got to watch the old, original Vincent Price House of Wax on Netflix DVD and a lot of the time when Vincent Price isn't on screen, it definitely isn't as interesting, but this is one of those old gothic kind of feely horror films, and I really enjoyed it. It had some great effects, and Vincent Price is great as always, so it's definitely something I'd recommend. And then something very interesting from 2019 I got to watch was Fast Color on, AM, on Amazon Prime, and it's about superpowers and but it's in a much more grounded way and it has more of like a Logan kind of vibe and this like out in the West kind of vibe than a lot of other quote unquote superhero movies and a strong performances in it and the story isn't the most well handled story but it's interesting enough you connect with the characters and their strong performances and I liked with some of the effects and some of the choices in terms of like the powers and how you see them in a much more grounded way. So I definitely recommend that. Now for the shows, watching My Hero Academia, the most recent episode, this is something that you're starting to go in a new direction with the season after a long stretch of episodes really connected. And it was a interesting way of taking some of the characters that hadn't been used in those 10 episodes and them trying to become get their heroes license and dealing with kids and like a bunch of fervent kids like wanting to meet their heroes and that was like a fun little side episode I'm interested to see where that episode keeps going I'm still on the edge of the outsider huh get it and I'm at that point where I'm starting to lose a little interest in The Outsider. There's some cool ideas, and Cynthia Erivo and Ben Mendelsohn are definitely strong parts of the show. But I just feel like the show's not living up to those like first two episodes and the intrigue of it. But it definitely has some interesting and dark turns of it. And especially with Ben Mendelsohn's wife and this weird figure. So I'm interested enough... This episode was better than the last one, but I'm still kind of on the edge about it. The new episode of The New Pope, really getting more of John Malkovich coming into his own. Have, like, this one was a weird episode, like he met Marilyn Manson, and it's just like, okay, this is interesting, and just seeing Marilyn Manson talking with like the Pope in this was a very interesting thing. And... I got to watch the third season of Sabrina, and honestly, for me, this was my favorite one. This was ambitious. 
It had crazy ideas. It went some crazy new places with the characters. This whole clavering of like pagan worshippers and pagan gods like straight out of the Wicker Man was interesting. And dealing a lot more with hell. And this last episode of the season was definitely the most ambitious episode of Sabrina. It went to crazy places and I'm like, okay, I'm down for this. And I felt like the season moved along a little bit better than the past couple. Got to watch a new episode of Miracle Workers, which they had some fun with the idea of like medicine in like medieval times. And like somebody not knowing what they're talking about telling a guy's like, we have to cut your dick off because you have a cold. And it's just like, well, okay, that obviously makes a whole lot of sense. And people just like, okay, he's a doctor, we're going to go with it. That kind of attitude in like medieval times and not realizing like, makes no sense. But a doctor said it and they had a lot of fun humor with that. So it was a fun episode. I watched the Ted Bundy Falling for a Killer docuseries and there was on Amazon Prime they spent a lot of time trying to build, paint a broader stroke and big picture of this situation, and I felt like some of it energy was lost on that. But in general, I feel like this was a really engaging, cool perspective of the story because you're getting to see it from the woman who he spent most of his life with and the young girl, her daughter. And I thought that was a very interesting perspective, and this was a nice companion to those Ted Bundy tapes from Netflix. And then the latest episode of Diary of a Future President, it dealt with some fun ideas and like Rachel Bloom popped up in it, so I thought that was a fun little cameo in this. And like dealing with like growing up as a young girl, growing into a woman and dealing with still with the relationship of the guy that the co-worker of the mom who really likes the mom and trying to grip with the fact that it's like she has kids, he's never had kids. And I thought there were some nice moments with that. And also with the teenage son dealing with like the angst of being a teenage boy, having like his first girlfriend and stuff. It's a fun, relatable show. But those are all the things I watched over the past week on the tube, really streaming, and all the films that I got to watch at home for the first time. But comment, let me know what you think about all these fun shows and, t and films, and let's talk some movies and TV. But thank you as always for supporting your Wasteland Reviewer.